Welcome to this episode of the SciXNow Learning Hub, Introduction to LCMS Series. In this episode, we will talk about the atmospheric pressure chemical ionization process. Before we explore the process of atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, we will first examine when to use ESI and when it may be advantageous to apply APCI for your analysis. This graph illustrates that the choice depends on the hydrophilicity, or polarity, of your target compounds, as well as their molecular weight. ESI is effective for compounds with a broad range of polarities, whereas APCI is particularly effective for low-polarity compounds, such as steroids. ESI provides compound analysis across a broad range of molecular weights. It is notably effective for high molecular weight substances, such as proteins and peptides, where multiple charged states can be detected. Unlike APCI, ESI is suitable for thermally unstable compounds and can be operated in both positive and negative ion modes, whereas APCI is limited to thermally stable molecules and tends to be restricted to positive ion mode. The ionization efficiency in ESI is significantly affected by the solvent composition, while APCI can handle higher buffer concentrations. You can see that there is an overlapping area where both techniques can be applied. Consider using APCI if you observe reduced sensitivity or background noise, as it tends to cause less ionization suppression related to matrix effects. We will now examine the ionization process in APCI step by step the first step is the ionization of gas molecules and involves a corona discharge. While a corona discharge should be avoided when performing ESI, this phenomenon is an essential part in the APCI process. A field strength is applied to the tip of a corona needle, which separates electrons from the surrounding gas molecules in the ion source, and a gas plasma is formed containing ionized nitrogen and oxygen ions. In parallel, the liquid from the LC flow exits the electrode and enters the ion source. This area is effectively heated, causing the components of the LC flow, that is solvents, modifiers, matrix, and target compounds, to be transferred into the gas phase. The ionized gas molecules initiate a series of reactions with other gas and solvent molecules. To illustrate this process, we will use nitrogen ions interacting with water molecules in the positive ion mode as an example. The important outcome of this reaction cascade is the formation of protonated water molecules. In the next step, protons are transferred from the solvent to the target molecules. This process occurs in the gas phase. Unlike electrospray ionization, where it takes place in the liquid phase, gas phase proton transfer allows for the detection of compounds that do not easily ionize in liquid, such as steroids and lipids, which are effectively protonated in APCI. So try using APCI if ESI gives low sensitivity. This schematic illustrates the technical setup of APCI sources which enables the chemical ionization process. The transfer of the LC flow into the gas phase is aided by the heat and a gas flow in the heated nebulizer. As within the ESI ion source setup, ions undergo a pressure gradient as they travel from ionization at atmospheric pressure to their entry into the mass analyzer. it is essential to optimize the source parameters when using atmospheric pressure chemical ionization. Note that the minimum flow rate supported by the APCI probe is 200 microliters per minute. Thank you for watching this episode. To view the full training course, including progress checks and a final quiz to earn a certificate, go to SciX.com. Log in today to take advantage of the highly rated training material offered in the SciX Now Learning Hub. You can use the links below.